Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at CV tools in Ableton Live and how I like to use them with sensory percussion. CV tools are a pack that is available for free download for Live 10 suite owners. It's primarily meant for uh, sending and receiving control voltage from Ableton, but there's a lot of stuff you can do internally with it as well. And that's what I wanted to focus on in this video. There's several devices and a zillion things you can do with them, but I wanted to kind of get to the heart of it, so I'm only focusing on the CV LFO and the CV utility module. So, electronic music needs motion to be engaging, and with sensory percussion, our tool for motion is controllers. We can take controllers from sensory percussion and apply them to parameters of CV tools to do things that would be impossible to do by applying the controllers directly to the destination. So to start things out, I wanted to do something as simple as possible by making a really blatant example of what an LFO is and what it can be used for. Um, this is the CV LFO object or device and you can see this really slow oscillating shape and that is being mirrored to the oscillator one octave knob which you can see this knob is mirroring the shape of this waveform. LFO stands for low frequency oscillator which I'm sure you've all heard about before but in case you don't understand what that means it's an oscillator and oscillators are always running and that's why it's just continuing to move without us doing anything. The low frequency part just means that it's operating below audio rate. And if we switch this over to Hertz, we can bump it up pretty far. So that's 40 Hertz. And now this waveform looks like something you're used to seeing in a, a region in your DAW. This isn't going to sound very good. I mean, it's kind of interesting, but it's not as useful as bringing it down to sub audio rate. So in this case, using a sub-audio waveform to modulate the octave selection on this synth allows us to take a really boring sequence and add some variation to it. Now where this gets interesting is when we use controllers from sensory to percussion to modulate these parameters of the LFO itself. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to grab velocity and quickly map it to the rate of the LFO. So now when I play harder notes, the LFO is going to speed up. And when I play softer, it's going to go really slow. Using the same concept, but in a more subtle and probably more musical way, um, we can use a velocity controller to modulate the depth of the LFO. And in this case, the LFO is mapped to oscillator detune. So when I play harder, it's going to add vibrato, which feels really intuitive because when you're playing harder, you're adding emphasis. A lot of synths do have a built-in LFO where you can map to the um, amplitude or the amount directly, but the cool thing about using the CV LFO for this is that we can use this technique on any parameter and we can map it to multiple destinations simultaneously. In this next example, let's take a look at the CV utility object. This object allows you to take multiple modulations and scale them and combine them. In this case, we're going to focus on combining two different sources. So we have this LFO coming in from the CV LFO, which you can see here. And then on uh, value 1, I have velocity coming in. The CV utility object is summing these control signals and sending them to the frequency cutoff. And this, is, this track is just processing audio from sensory percussion. The result here is that the filter is getting influenced by velocity, but also the ebb and flow of this LFO. Mm -hmm. 
We can also use the CV utility object to scale our modulation. I have velocity mo mapped to this MIDI pitch object, which is just going to transpose the MIDI note. And so if I bring this up full, I could scale it down, which is really useful. But I could also just turn it off. I find this to be extremely useful because sometimes you want to use controllers for things that get a little out of hand, uh, especially if you're hearing it all the time. So in this case, we're going to use a clip to con to modulate this amount parameter for us. And what this is doing is basically only allowing velocity through at the end of every other measure. So this way we can sort of stick with the sequence, although there's not really a sequence here and then every other measure, we can deviate it from it. file. Um, you can get this whole setup from my Patreon or my website. So if you're playing along with these examples, uh, you might notice that there's a slight problem with this setup. When I play a harder velocity, the parameter goes up and reflects in the pitch object, but it doesn't actually come through until I play the next note. This is because of a little bit of latency that's introduced by sending the controller to the CV utility and then the destination. In this case, the updated pitch information arrives at the MIDI pitch object after the note on message has already been sent. And unfortunately, you can't change the MIDI note number of a MIDI note message after it's sent. So it gets deferred to the next note. While this might feel like a bit of a buzzkill and you might feel your belief in computer music falling apart a little bit, I would encourage you to move forward anyway. Take a step back and hold things a bit more loosely. Realize that you're still influencing the pitch transposition with the nuances of your playing. It's just getting deferred one note. However, there are some workarounds. We could use a envelope and a clip to turn on and off the object itself and then map directly to the pitch object. Or you could transfer this whole concept to the modular domain. Because rhythm and pitch are handled separately with control voltage, the pitch can update according to your input even though the gate already happened. You can even hear the latency with that slight glitch in the pitch. Honestly, I like how that sounds, and you could even lean into that more by, by adding smoothing on the CV utility object. Let's wrap up with a final example where we're going to use the CV utility object to turn on and off modulation from sensory percussion, but we're going to use it in a more chaotic way. In this case, we're moduling, modulating the start time on this sample. This sample is a track that I made a, some, at some point in my life, and I never used it for anything because I ended up not liking it. But we can do some interesting things by using velocity to jump to completely different parts of the song. In this case, the latency that the CV utility object adds, it doesn't really matter, and we can use this signal flow to seamlessly transition between predictability with this start time to some really cool wild stuff over here. We're embracing the chaos of life and making something interesting anyway.